there. I'm Dr. Ronan Shea. I'm an internal medicine resident working at Albert Einstein Medical Center, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. In this project, entitled Extreme Thrombocytosis, a contemporary series, I work with Dr. Ronald Goh and many other hematologists in Mayo Clinic, Rochester. This manuscript is published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Extreme thrombocytosis is defined as platinum number more than 1 trillion per liter of blood. Physicians are often wondering the implication of such a high number of platelet count. What are the causes? Does it indicate a previously undiagnosed malignancies? Should patients with extreme thrombocytosis receive a bone marrow study? Previous data were lacking to address these concerns. Therefore, we conducted a retrospective analysis on patients in Mayo Clinic Rochester from 2011 to 2016. We included adult patients with at least two platelet numbers more than 1 trillion per liter of blood within 30 days. In total, 305 patients were included. This number was about 1% of patients with thrombocytosis, indicating that extreme thrombocytosis was a rare event. About 80% of cases of extreme thrombocytosis could be explained by multiple causes. When we look into the platelet trend, we found that extreme thrombocytosis was not a single factor event. Rather, extreme thrombocytosis was a multiple heat phenomenon. For example, patients may have chronically elevated uh, platelet number uh, because of hematologic malignancies, but a number of platelets never reached more than 1 trillion per liter of blood until they had acute infections. By analyzing a platelet trend, we further investigated uh, the dominant causes of extreme thrombocytosis. The dominant cause was defined as the factor that increased the platelet number the most. In inpatient, the most common dominant cause was surgical complications. In outpatients, it was hematologic malignancies. Other factors may be common, but they may not be the most dominant cause. For example, 70% of patients who had infections or inflammation underwent recent surgeries. And 85% of patients who had iron deficiency also had hematologic malignancy. Compared to surgery and hematologic malignancies, the influences of infection, inflammation, and iron deficiency on the plane number was relatively little in these cases. Our study also found drastically different pictures between inpatient and outpatient with uh, extreme thrombocytosis. The most common causes of extreme thrombocytosis in patients are surgical complications, splenectomy, and infections or inflammation. In outpatient, the most common causes of extreme thrombocytosis were hematologic malignancies, prior history of splenectomy, and iron deficiency. Contrary to some belief, a new diagnosis of malignancy in patients with extreme thrombocytosis is not common, accounting for about 12% of patients. This number is even lower in inpatient, about 9% only. In addition, less than 5% of patients have persistent extreme thrombocytosis more than 90 days. Based on these facts, in our opinion, an extensive search for an undiagnosed hematologic malignancy is not necessary, especially in an inpatient setting. Patients who was found having extreme thrombocytosis should have a repeat blood work and assessment for non-malignant causes first. We recommended work out for hematologic malignancies only when other major causes are absent or when patients have persistent extreme thrombocytosis more than 90 days. In summary, based on our findings, A. Extreme thrombocytosis is a multiple heat phenomenon. B. The causes of extreme thrombocytosis are drastically different between different patient populations and care settings. C. The likelihood of a new diagnosis of hematologic malignancy is not common in patients with extreme thrombocytosis. Non-malignant causes should be considered first. Workout for hematologic malignancy is only considered in patients with persistent extreme thrombocytosis more than 90 days. We believe the finding of our study is important to both hematologic field and primary care setting. I thank you for your watching. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, 
Our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about health care at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.